very happy with the success on the glove box. I'm about ready to bolt it back in. Um, you know, they got these creepy plastic hinges, but the thing was cheap enough, 20 bucks to, to replace it, so it'll last me for however long I'm gonna have the thing. Um, however, it's a bad sign when this box, with all my connectors, and my test light, and my meter come out, that's always a bad sign. That means electrical. And I was able to trace out some of the wires from the fuse block that looked aftermarket, like somebody jammed in there. Uh, there's one wire that goes up to the tack in the, um, it looks factory, but it kind of didn't, so I wasn't sure. Traced it out, goes from the tack uh, output up to the tachometer in the dashboard, and then down to the fuse block in the run only position. So that way I have tack sense, tachometer sense tells me my RPMs. Found some creepy brown wire that was half uninsulated. So I ran a new one. It went from the run position in the fuse block out here to the electric choke. That was something somebody put in. So I'm okay with that. But the rear window light, cab light, wouldn't come on with the door. That one up there. Normally you open the door, there's a pin switch, that light comes on. <coughs> I had no lights. I turned the um, headlight knob and the light under the dash would come on, but not the light up top. And simply by accident, I had it in the run position, open the door and that light came on. So somebody decided to start hacking wire. That white wire mess behind the dashboard behind the glove box i said you know let's take a look at that now and see what it does it was all taped up i had a feeling there was something going on and that white wire stretches from that side of the truck to the driver's side and goes through the firewall I said, that's a factory wire what's it do and i traced it down to the pin switch so i metered it out and the pin switch sends it to ground like it normally should. And I traced the wire back to the fuse block for the upper light and discovered somebody had jerry-rigged that and plugged it into the ignition, only the run only tab, which there is a factory tab for it to plug into for, uh, for batteries, it's supposed to be on batteries. So when you open the door, obviously at night, the lights come on. So, the wiring was all cut up behind the dash. The lower light under the dash wasn't coming on. I thought maybe the plug was for a glove box light, which there is no mount or light or provision for that. So I said, maybe I'm not seeing it right. Started tracing it out, got it figured out so that when I opened the door, at least the cab light came on, but not the one under the dash. And when I turned the knob, the one under the dash came on, but not the one in the cab. So, started fooling around, traced that white wire back, and I said, I wonder if it just needs to be connected to the light under the dash. And it has to be wired to battery. Because I had battery power on both leads of the under dash light and you take out the bulb, now I have power on one side. So it's telling me that these lights all get power all the time, which is normal for these older vehicles. And then the pin switch grounds and turns on your lights or a pin switch on either side, they're wired in um, series. But what I didn't realize is it runs also to the under dash light. So I pulled the under dash light out and there is literally a socket wide open, a third socket, I'm, and it looks like the pin that I untaped was supposed to go in there. So I metered it out, I grounded the pin, the lights came on, I plugged it in, put the bulb back, and holy crap, everything works. The under dash light, everything works off the knob for the headlights. Open the door on either side, and the pin switch, on and off you can see it works all the lights so i don't know for the love of god why somebody 
took that all apart and jerry-rigged it, I, no clue. I just, you know, a little metering and about an hour and a half, two hours of just, you know, looking through the wiring. I didn't even go to the book for this one because, you know, me being a wireman, I want, wiring is my thing. I'm like, I want to get this one. So I got this one on my own. I was pretty happy with it. Now I just got to clean up that mess. And uh, I'm not going to put the glove box back in yet. I want to get rid of that creepy clock. And I think I may have to get behind the glove box to fix this deal because the cables all go through there. So if it's a cable that's hung up and, and, and that's why this is broke off, um, I'm gonna pull it out, lube it up, make everything new again. So so it turned into an easy glove box, uh, 45 minute, uh, 30 minute uh, glove box job. Turned into a couple hours of wiring, figuring out the wiring, fixing the wiring. And now we're on to some heating and cooling stuff. So. We're going to get Hooper back in shape here and, uh, you know, start with some easy stuff and just get into it. Just re get right into it. So we're having a ball. Okay, we're going to be back. Oh, by the way, this cover, I thought, oh, the seat's probably nasty. I pulled the cover off. The seat under here is original and minty, minty, minty. Um, door cards aren't bad. They got a little issue here. I think I might be able to fix these with some ingenuity and this is a little ratty but I think if I wet sand it a little bit and then you apply a little heat um, you know that that'll probably fix that I may be able to reuse these door cards they aren't that expensive but you know 200 bucks for door cards could be 200 bucks somewhere else on the project so we'll just uh, we'll just keep moving forward get a little bit of that done that'll solve the uh, Oh, and got to pull the heater motor out because, it, like I said before, it sounds like a wounded wombat. It just needs probably just a replace. I'm just going to replace it. I'll be done with it. So, and we're moving on.